In Proverbs chapter 13, verse 2, it says, A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the transgressors shall eat violence. Yeah, so notice he's, what he's talking about eating, he's saying you're going to get the consequences of. So what he's saying simply is this, a man shall have consequences of good by the fruit of his mouth. Okay, verse 3 says, he that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but he that opens wide his lips shall have destruction. Now when it says open wide your mouth, his, your lips, it's talking about, well, how we say it, just your lips are just flapping. When you open wide your mouth, it says you're saying all kinds of stuff. And it says when you do that, you will have destruction in your life. In other words, if you have no reins on the bridle, you know, that's supposed to be in your mouth. If you have no way of controlling your mouth, you're going to have destruction. Now, this is the word of God. And people can say, well, that didn't, that didn't count for me because I'm a Christian. <clears throat> no, Proverbs is how Christians are supposed to live, right? They were given under the old covenant and under the law necessarily, but, I say under the law, but they were words uh, given uh, to learn wisdom by. But understand that these words, most of the people then <clears throat> couldn't even truly fulfill them. But now they're given and now we can fulfill them because we're in a new covenant where we have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us to help us know these and to live by them. Now, in uh, Hebrews chapter 8 and chapter 10, both, both uh, it says that in that covenant, God said, I will write my laws, I'll put my laws in their minds and I'll write them on their hearts. See, we don't have a tablet to go by. It's written, if you are born again, his words, his laws are written in your heart and upon your mind. Now, he puts them in your heart, but then you have to have them transferred from the heart to the mind. That's called renewing the mind. But in your heart, it's already in you to do the Ten Commandments. It's already in there. And now you say, oh, you're putting us back under the law. No, no, no. I'm telling you, in this new covenant, the law was put into you that you could fulfill it. Do you understand that? So it's not a matter of the Ten Commandments and following the law of Moses and going after that. What I'm saying is that if you're born again, you will have no other gods before God. You don't have to be told not to. You don't want any. See, if you're born again, you're not going to covet your neighbor's goods. You're going to rejoice in the fact that they're being blessed. Why? Because you're just as blessed, if not more blessed, if they're not even born again. Amen? Amen. So you're not going to covet their goods. You're not going to do all these things. You're not going to take God's name in vain. You're going to do them. Why? Because they're in you already to do good. That's why you're here. You know, hopefully anyway. You know, hopefully it wasn't out of just religious duty of, well, I got to go to church or I'll go to hell. <laughs> Let me tell you, a lot of people that go to church still going to hell. Why? Because their hearts haven't been changed. And when you die, your spirit's going to go to the place most like your heart. Now, most people think their heart's good. But that's really not for you to say. Why? Why? Because we have to look at you by the fruit that you produce. <clears throat> 